Hey everybody, we are Teaching Tilt Brush, and this episode of Teaching Tilt Brush is all about tricks with guides. That's right, those little ubiquitous tools that help us draw straight lines and shapes. There are a few extra tricks we can use to make more complex shapes rather than just these primitive ones, and how to control them once we start making larger structures and that type of thing. So I can get a couple of extra shapes going here, just so we've got some pieces to play with, and we'll try doing some interesting stretchies and not just normal shapes with them. We'll get one ellipsoid out here because we love the ellipsoid so much. You can play it all sorts of interesting ways. There we go. I'm going to leave our controller up here because we're doing guides and a few more tricks with guides. So we've all seen how we can use these shapes and paint upon them with any type of paint for surfaces and regular shapes. But if you want something a little more complicated, it might be nice to be able to build something out of it, like a spaceship or something, without having, let's be careful with our symbolism here, uh, without having to worry about it falling apart or keeping it as one object and moving it as a full on shape, that type of thing. So here's how we're gonna use these guys. One of the things that's gonna help you build a larger object is when you're holding any guide, your thumb button, you'll notice one of them is gonna have a lock. That keeps that shape locked in at 180 and 90 degrees. So you can see I can turn it and move it, but it's always gonna stay perfectly parallel, perfectly uh, perpendicular, whichever way you hold it. So if I grab the pill, I could either be loose, or when I lock it with the thumb, you can see it's only gonna hold at one of those 90 degree projections. So I'm gonna have this thing, let's make it a little less, uh, a little easier to work with here, pill and I'm gonna lock it. Now all guides, whether or not it's locked, every surface will have its center point clearly marked with the, where the X is. So even if it's really skinny, it's making an X at the center of each surface. Here in my ellipsoid, you can see how there's a center on all of the directions you can look at it, even the sphere, whether it's a big sphere or a tiny sphere, we have those center points. While they are locked, what I can do is I can maneuver this so I can find those center points to get them to line up exactly where I want them to. Now a guide, like any other object, I can select and duplicate, for example, and now I can, whoops, turn off selection and lock to get it to line up. It will automatically add these guidelines at regular intervals. So now we're gonna lock. And now I'll grab this one and we're gonna lock and get its center point matching up with its center point. Actually, what we'll do is we'll make a spaceship here, so I can grab you and lock to that center point. Grab you, lock to that center point. So we'll get halfway through the center points. Halfway through the center points. As long as you're locked, you know everything's gonna line up. So now I'm making this shape, making this object. Let's add one more guide shape in here. Uh, another sphere, lock. Now I can just go center point to center point. And even if I'm not perfectly steady with my hand, I know how things are gonna line up. Now this guy isn't lined up on the box center point, so we're gonna grab, lock, center. Grab, lock, center. Use those crosses so that you know things are gonna be centered and lined up the way you want. Now in this case, they're all still separate pieces. So if I was to grab any one piece, I would pull it out of my puzzle. But once I've got my model assembled, this looks sort of like, let's, I'm gonna grab this, make it a lot bigger. Uh, actually, we're gonna make this, scale the whole thing up, find its center point, lock, center point. 
Now I've got this sort of Zeppelin shape going here. Okay, this is going to be fun. I'm going to make an airship. Now, if I wanted to keep the whole thing together as one big model, I'm going to use my selection tool, select all the pieces, and group them. Now, this whole shape is considered one piece. Please bear in mind, now that it's a group, I can no longer lock. So, it won't always line up. The moment I move this guy, he's no longer going to be perfectly parallel. And I have no easy way to get that back. So, make sure you've got your model mostly complete. Otherwise, to relock it, you would have to ungroup and reassemble every single piece back into its lock shape. You can get it close by hand, but I guarantee you'll never retrieve a true lock without that. And once it's a group, it's no longer a single guide. Now Tilt Brush is going to tr treat this group as if it was a normal grouped object in Tilt Brush. So now I can turn off the selection and grab any part of it, and the whole thing comes together. If I scale it bigger, smaller, the whole thing scales bigger, smaller. Now, they are still guides, so you'll notice it does reset the outlines, reset the center points as I change the scale on it, as I make it bigger and smaller. As my world gets bigger or smaller, the guide gets bigger or smaller. Even if I scale the world, now I've got the guide, and you can see how big it is in relation to the floor of the main area. Now, when working with these types of guide shapes, I'm going to move it so now you can see I am inside the Zeppelin. Movement gets very tricky because once your controller is inside the guide, any grip action is moving the whole guide, not anything else. So, if I wanted to move, and I'm used to moving with grippies type of thing. No, I'm now grippy the guide, not the world. Or if I just grip with one hand, I'm gripping the whole thing, whether I want to or not. So, if you are inside a guide, we're going to need the teleport tool to move around inside the guide as one option to not disturb the way you have everything set up. Let me get my guide a little smaller here. Another option, once you've got the guide model in the place you want, don't forget we've got the option to pin, pin this model in place. See that? Big pin. And that means even if I'm inside the model, if I grip, I can't accidentally move the model, pin it in place. Now when I use both hands, both hands, now I'm moving the entire world, not just the model. But you can see I'm moving the floor, even when I get inside the model, it still counts as moving the world because the model is pinned in place. Remember your quick tools menu, that pin tool really helps keep these things in place. As long as it's a group, as long as it's pinned, I don't have to worry about accidentally moving it. Because when it's big and you're inside, you're going to accidentally move it a lot. Even if you just accidentally grip with one hand, that's enough to move your model out of place. At any point in the game, where'd my uh, guide panel go, you can hide the guide. It's not gone, it's just hidden. So you can see how your painting looks. So if I've been painting on the guides here, I can see how it looks without the guides themselves. Because they're guides, I do have to paint each piece separately. So for example, I can't paint straight from the balloon onto the box because my paintbrush is stuck to the balloon shape. I move on to the box. I'm in fact going to come at it from the inside here. Box. Now I can paint on the box surface. They're two separate pieces, so you do still need to paint them separately. Even if they overlap, your brush will be stuck to one particular surface at a time. I should probably use one that you can use C shapes on, huh? Let's use a normal color uh, in a normal type of brush. 
just so you can see what the heck Ben is talking about. So you can see I've got painting on the surfaces here, or I can switch to painting on the other surfaces. And now I can hide the guide so I can see how things look. And I can start building up these much more complicated shapes. Now that I've got this, these groups, let's unpin this guy. Menu, pin, pin, unpin. Now I can go back to normal and grab this whole thing as a group. Instead of lock, group, thumb button will duplicate. Shrink him down, duplicate, duplicate. Expand him big, duplicate. So once it's a group, instead of just a mere guide, the system is going to treat it as if it was the full thing, not just normal properties. So if I did want to change sizes of individual pieces, I'm going to need to ungroup, you, ungroup, unselect. Now I can go and grab each individual piece, resize, reshape, realign, Here's a case where, again, because I can no longer lock this, or I could lock it now, but now I'm going to have to go in ahead and relock each piece. You can see how even this one is at a slight angle. That one's a slight different angle. So we can have these much more fun and complicated, interesting shapes. Another useful point is your guides save with your sketch. So you don't have to worry about rebuilding these things later on. I can save the sketch and next time I load the sketch, at first it'll look like they aren't there. So watch this, I've got these pieces here. I'm gonna paint another couple lines on this just so we can see some uh, pieces here. We'll get a big Zeppelin shape going here and the box underneath. Okay, and we'll grab a red one over here. But now I'm gonna save this and switch to a different one. So save this sketch, we'll get our Zeppelins added to the sketchbook. And now I'm gonna load a different sketch just so you can see what I'm talking about. Here is another quick, simple, empty sketch. And it looks like I don't have any guides in here. But if you look at your guide menu, they are here, they're just still hidden. So I'm gonna turn them visible again, and here is the little snowman guide I made earlier. By default, you can see it still has the model pin. If I try grabbing it, it all lights up, meaning it's still the group. So no matter what you do with it to set up your picture, if you don't finish it right away, don't worry about losing what you've done, all of this will be saved as part of the sketch. Even if you pass this to somebody else in Tilt Brush, the guides are there. It won't take any of your reference images and that types of things, but anything you do using the basic tools should be still available for you to play with. So hopefully this gives you a little more detail. You can really make complicated shapes, just build them all first so you don't have to worry about relocking unless you've got a very steady hand or making organic shapes. But once you've got those going, you can save them as a group and use them as much more interesting guides, much more detail, make a whole variety of spaceships or a forest of trees or a city of buildings or whatever it is your creativity takes you. Tilt Brush can do all this and a lot more. If you have questions, let us know in the comments down below and we'll try to get answers, even if it's a request for a topic of an episode. We'd love to present you with information that helps you get more out of Tilt Brush. So go ahead and click the link to subscribe or list any comments down below. We do this archived on youtube.com slash shameless mayhem. We're not going anywhere. Have fun with Tilt Brush. Take care, everybody.